Most people believe that technology can help developing communities, but it can also widen divides. I grew up in Sri Lanka, in a developing community, and then I came to the US for my higher education. So I've seen both of these worlds, and the potential that technology has to bridge them rather than divide them. This is why we started TechBridge World here at Carnegie Mellon University, to work with developing communities and to build technology that can empower them to realize their vision of progress. When we're talking about development, we're not just talking about people having, you know, food, clothing and shelter. We're talking about a community being able to realize its goals and chart its future. And this requires being able to participate actively in a global economy. And in terms of technology, technology that means being creators as not just consumers of technology. In TechBridge World, everything we do starts at the grassroots. We first find a partner and work with them to understand the needs of their community. A project doesn't even start until we've identified a need where we think technology can have an impact. We're really excited that in the first four years of TechBridge World, we've already established partnerships in over a dozen countries, including Zambia, India, Colombia, Ghana, and many more. A good example for our approach is our Braille Writing Tutor project. One of our former students, Nidhi Kalra, worked with our partner, who in this case was the Master School for the Blind in India, to jointly identify technology that can help visually impaired children. One of the problems the teachers told me about was that some of their students were too weak to write and some of the younger ones didn't understand the concept of Braille. So I asked them to send me a video of their students writing and they did and immediately it was clear to me how complex this problem was but I was also able to identify right away ways in which technology could potentially play a role. Nitty came to me with the idea of using something physical, some new input device to allow students to learn Braille by having the computer interact with them. For the next year, Tom and I worked on improving the hardware and the software and getting input from the blind community in Pittsburgh and researchers at CMU until we had a device that we felt pretty confident about that we could take to India. And so in the summer of 2006, I boarded a plane and headed off to Bangalore. Our first field test was very successful and we learned that we could improve this tool in many different ways. So our students worked on improving the design of the tutor they built a new curriculum and added several new things like mathematics and new languages in Braille. And then we were ready to field test this again. So we built a new partnership with the Safula School for the Visually Impaired in Zambia, and we also sent our students back to the Matra School in India. We decided to develop a couple of games. The first one was an animal game. The Braille tutor would throw out um, an animal sound uh, through the computer speakers and the students would have to write down, using the Braille Tutor, what animal that was. So we saw that the Braille Tutor could also be used to teach other subjects, such as general sciences and general knowledge, um, in a fun and interactive way. We've seen how the Braille Writing Tutor transforms the lives of these children. And because of its low cost, our goal is that every blind child in the developing world will have access to these tutors. But the Braille Writing Tutor is just one example. We have several other projects that have similar impact in the communities we work with. These bridges that we build to developing communities also have life-changing impact on us and on our students. The Braille Tutor project was a specific problem with a specific solution, but it really reinforced my feeling that I want to continue doing this type of work for the rest of my life. I hope to work on similar projects in the future that, you know, wherever I go, there are organizations like Engineers Without Borders, which does similar work. Um, and hopefully there's something like TechBridge World at wherever I end up. I really would like to see a world which, in which people participate on more equal footing. And so the experiences I've had in TechBridge World in terms of working with partners, in terms of working with technology and implementing and innovating new technology for new settings is going to be invaluable for me. People may not realize that the developing world is also full of creative and entrepreneurial minds. This is why what we do is so important, because we build bridges that bring together people from the developing world and the developed world to jointly create technology that improves our lives and our world. 
To hear more about our work and find out how to support our efforts, visit www.techbridgeworld.org.